Warning, this content may be offensive, upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. What's the worst form of torture to have ever existed? Being broken on the wheel. You're tied to a cartwheel that's resting on the ground. Then all of your limbs and joints are smashed with a hammer. Ankles, shins, knees, hips, hands, wrists, elbows. Then, the wheel is turned up ways and rotated. All your broken bones and sinew continue to cause internal damage, but none of your important organs are, so you live for a long time. Like a bag of pain, broken and screaming, until you die of blood loss or exhaustion. I don't know if it has an exact name, but you are in the ground up to your neck, unable to move or anything, and only your head is out, so you can breathe. Then they put water and sugar on your head to attract flies that will eat your flesh and deposit their eggs inside you, and when they hatch the maggots will eat you from inside out if you are not dead by then. I accidentally took my 9 year old into the torture museum in Siena, a woman outside in a jolly ye old style costume was handing out family passes. Inside a man acted out having his bare legs put into a bucket of boiling tar. He was left there until the tar hardened, it was peeled off along with all of his skin, and then rag soaked and vine gar were wrapped around the raw oozing flesh. It wasn't quite the London dungeon experience we were expecting. Testicle crushing as punishments was performed as slowly as possible to worsen the intensity of the victim's agony and lengthen its duration. Standard practice in France from the Middle Ages to the French Revolution was to crush the condemned's testicles in a vice, which burst them as mush from the scrotum, then crunch the spermatic cords with pliers. The condemned was turned upside down in order to maximize the blood flow to his brain, after which he was unable to pass out or enter a state of shock until, perhaps, the last few seconds of his ordeal. The condemned was sure to vomit repeatedly with violent convulsions, even well after he had voided the contents of his stomach, but he rarely screamed except for an initial shriek, which immediately silenced, because the pain overwhelmed his ability to breathe. Most men would hang and thrash wildly during and after the crushing of each testicle, and their thrashing would renew upon the crushing of each spermatic cord. The process would last an entire day. This torture method, accompanied by others, was usually reserved for the crime of regicide or attempted regicide. The event was witnessed by large crowds. It is interesting to note that, whereas most crowds were instructed to jeer, mock, and ridicule the condemned, and did so even during a disemboweling, and drawing and quartering, most crowds remained silent, and stared with shocked expressions as the castration was carried out in this manner. Onlookers, male and female, are recorded to have vomited at the sight of the spectacle. Everyone's talking about old torture styles, but not many current day ones. Like when people inject you with adrenaline, so you stay conscious and live longer while they things to you that would have killed you otherwise. There's a video out there, which I wish I hadn't watched, of a man tortured to death in this fashion. You really can't see anything in the video. It starts after the torture and all you can tell is that there is a bloody body, but you can hear the cartel guys speaking in Spanish. They had cut off his hands and skinned his face and he wasn't moving, but he wasn't dead. They tried to cut his throat with a farm tool that was dull. When they started that's when I shut it off. I should know better than to click on a link like that. It's not the imagery that's the worst. It's the way the men are so passive about it in their conversation about it. Like it's just a Tuesday at work. The torture of Robert Frank Damien is one of the worst things I've ever read. I first read it in foul courts discipline and punish. It not just one technique, but many layered on top of each other. Fetched from his prison cell on the morning of the 28th of March 1757, Day means allegedly said the day will be hard. He was first subjected to torture in which his legs were painfully compressed by devices called boots. He was then tortured with red hot pincers, the hand with which he had held the knife during the attempted assassination, was burned using sulfur, molten wax, molten lead, and boiling oil were poured into his wounds. He was then remanded to the royal executioner, Charles Henry Sanson, 
who harnessed horses to his arms and legs to be dismembered. But Damien's apostrophe limbs did not separate easily. The officiants ordered Sanson to cut Damien's tendons. Once that was done the horses were able to perform the dismemberment. Once Damien's was dismembered, to the applause of the crowd, his reportedly still living torso was burnt at the stake. Hanged, drawn, and quartered. First, you are attached to a wooden panel and dragged to the spot of your execution by horse. Then you are hung to almost the point of death. Next you are let down and strapped to a table while your insides and sometimes your genitals are removed and burned in a fire before you while you are still alive and able to see. Finally, you are beheaded and then your body is quartered and put on display in prominent parts of the country to remind others to kindly not commit treason. Brazen Bull It's a metal bull that you get placed inside of and they set a fire underneath, heating up the metal while you're inside. So you're trapped in a metal bull while the metal heats up red hot, searing, grilling, and burning you alive. You can't escape no matter what, you have to be in there until you're roasted. There was a special horn type thing built in the bull to make the victim scream sound like that of a bull's. Brutal. In the 18th century, in England, people put so-called witches on a spiky chair covered in salt, very painful. Then drowned them in water for 2 minutes, those who didn't die counted as witches and got burnt. They figured that getting rid of witches was a good deed, and since they were only looking for actual witches, any innocents that died were accidental deaths. So it wasn't murder, because they thought they were killing someone who had been sentenced to death. Judas Cradle you are going to sit Uranus or Vagina on a pyramid chair device and let it slowly split you apart. I saw it in a documentary type questionably actually a fictional movie about Amazonian tribes for adulterers. They first violated the girl with a sharp rock, then had her placed, cavity first, on a tree sharpened to a point. She died as she slowly slid down. The canoes. The canoes are the hapless prisoner tied to a canoe, covered in honey, and set adrift into a nearby swamp. The insects will immediately be attracted by the honey, and eat them alive from the front, and once they start pissing and crapping themselves, they'll be eaten alive from the back too. Similarly, the boats. The boats are about being encased in a shell or boats except hands, feet, and head, then being covered, and, force-fed milk and honey, likely repeatedly, attracting flies. No releasing in a swamp. Flies would mate and lay eggs, eggs would turn to maggots, the victim would urinate and excrete inside this enclosed shell. Excrement is acidic, and is full of bacteria. Then the maggots would settle in, festering in the excrement, multiplying still, eventually infesting the already rotting body through orifices and wounds inside the shell, and would eat, and multiply within the still living body of the victim until it died. Supposedly the torture lasts 17 days. I say supposedly, because it's only an alleged Persian torture method, no recordings of it ever used, might just be propaganda by the Greeks. How about immurement and specifically the Mongolian type? What they seem to have done, is to put a prisoner in a box, that forced in a very uncomfortable position. Said position would not let the prisoner either lie down or sit. Said box had a hole where the prisoner's head and possibly some limbs were chained thus forcing them to be exposed. They then dragged the box in the middle of the desert, and left the prisoner there without any food or water. Death would eventually occur due to starvation and or dehydration, but not before the prisoner experienced the intense heat and pecking of vultures. Brown rats. The victim was completely restrained and tied to the ground or a bed. The victim would then have many slits cut in their stomach. The torturer would place rats and trap them with a bowl on the victim's stomach, then place hot coal on top of the bowl and the rats would get hot. A few seconds would go by, and they would go into your stomach. Gnawing the intestines usually resulted in a few hours of agonizing pain for the victim. Obligatoire. Ugly in French means to forget. Often a castle would have basements and sub-basements and often one hole in the very bottom of the basements, that either you could not escape by climbing, or you were locked in. They'd drop you in it, and forget about you. You'd die from starvation, or thirst, and often would live long enough to go out of your mind in the dark, dank, wet, cold, rat-filled hole. When they place you on a metal slab with a razor, lined sarcophagus on top of you, 
they hit the slab hard, but never enough to do real damage, just severe discomfort causing you to move and cut yourself superficially. There's not enough play to open a vein or artery, you just slow roast, while slashing yourself over and over, but never enough to be fatal. Getting your anus sewn shut and they keep feeding you, and feeding you, and feeding you. Yes, you can end up vomiting fecal matter. Yes, your anus can rip open. But lastly, it is even more common for it not to come out from either end, but try to force its way out by making holes in the intestines and leaking out into the abdomen. This then very rapidly results in septic infections from bacteria getting into the bloodstream and is often lethal, even with modern medicine. This method can be even more effective without force feeding. The result is that it compounds itself as a form of psychological predicament torture and the victim will willingly stop eating food until starvation sets in and the body consumes fat reserves and starts to break down muscle tissue for energy to keep core vitals alive. At late stages though, the desire to eat will overtake abdominal pressure and they will eat back and forth the process will go for days or weeks until they die. The end result is that the victim has only extended the time taken to die from mere days to weeks or even over a month. And it just happens to be that the choices made by the victim themselves just result in the prolonged agony, whereas it would have been comparatively short and rapid had they been force fed. Keel hauling, a punishment inflicted for various offenses in the Dutch Navy. It is performed by plunging the delinquent repeatedly under the ship's bottom on one side and hoisting him up on the other after having passed under the keel. The blocks, or pulleys, by which he is suspended, are fastened to the opposite extremities of the main yard, and a weight of lead, or iron is hung upon his legs, to sink him to a competent depth. By this apparatus, he is drawn close up to the yard arm and then let fall suddenly into the sea, where, passing under the ship's bottom, he is hoisted up on the opposite side of the vessel. As this extraordinary sentence is executed with the serenity of temper peculiar to the Dutch, the culprit is allowed sufficient intervals to recover the sense of pain, of which indeed he is frequently deprived during the operation. In truth, a temporary insensibility to his sufferings ought by no means to be construed into disrespect of his judges, when we consider that this punishment is supposed to have peculiar propriety in the depth of winter, whilst the flakes of ice are floating on the stream, and that it is continued till the culprit is almost suffocated for want of air, benumbed with the cold of the water, or stunned with the blows his head received by striking the ship's bottom. Bamboo torture. You take your torture and tie them down to a platform, under which new bamboo shoots are growing. Bamboo grows incredibly fast, several inches per day, so the torturee will have to wait for the shoots to grow through their body to die. Incredibly painful, unnerving stuff. Death by 1000 cuts. These cuts are mini amputations. They cut your nose off here, fingertip there, eyeball, etc. Legend has it that the executioner slash torturer has over 100 scalpel slash knives for the job. There was a general that was executed this way because the emperor thought he committed treason, so he was sentenced to die via 1000 cuts, and his flesh was afterward cooked and fed to the people of the city. It's called Saddam Hussein. Made famous eponymously, a mercury thermometer is forced all the way up your urethra, and then a nice man takes a hammer to the whole shebang. Lots of fun extracting that puppy, when mercury poisoning is the least of your worries. I once heard an expert on torture describe what he thought was the worst. The victim is laid down on a flat table with their bare feet overhanging the edge. With the ankles tied, the soles of the feet are beaten over and over with flat clubs. It takes a long time, but long after the pain stops, you keep beating until all the muscular structure is destroyed. And then you turn the victim loose. Most of their body is still intact. Their legs even work. But they can never walk again without the muscles in their feet. They will be in constant pain with sharp bursts any time they move as several bone on bone movements occur. And they have to live with knowing that they are now more of a burden to their society than a functioning member. Furthermore, since there isn't any disgusting imagery or even that much screaming, you can convince people to administer this torture without making them reluctant to continue. The eagle wing method was used in Nordic Europe, 
and consisted of making two large cuts alongside the spine on the back of the victim. After the cut, they pulled their ribs out and made them look like wings. To make matters worse, they pulled the lung out and threw salt into the wounds. The punishment was painful and caused the victim to suffer for hours. Neuron torture. They just put an electrode in your pain center of the brain and apply a little current. They can do this forever and the pain it can be inflicted is basically endless. Yeah. In medieval times adultery was dealt with by skinning the penis of the male and inserting it into the vagina of the female. The male would bleed to death from his skinless wiener and the woman would get a nasty infection and die. This has stuck with me for years. The goats. You take a rope and tie someone to a chair. Strap them down so that they move their legs or arms. Then take a big bucket of salt water then dip their feet in it. Leave them like that for about a day with their feet just soaking in salt water. Once the day is up kick the chair over so their feet are up in the air. Then bring in a goat. It'll find his salt soaked feet and start licking. And it won't stop licking. It'll keep licking past the flesh and muscle all the way down to the bone. And you know what doesn't get bored. A goat licking salt. You can scream and try to kick, but that persistent salt licker won't give up. It will just stand then on all fours and lick at your feet with a coarse tongue for hours. The worst part is it's just the victim and a goat in a room. Nobody to plead with, or confess to, or bargain with. Just a goat that likes salt. That goat would be the most dedicated, hardworking, and empathetic torturer you've ever seen. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, hit like, get subscribed, and tell us other forms of torture that is not mentioned in the comment section, and support the original writers with upvotes, links in the description box.